Hey guys, I'm here. Welcome back for episode nine of the first season of My Adventures with Superman. This is the penultimate episode of the season. Next week, we have the finale. And I cannot tell you how much I've been enjoying this show, especially after the cliffhanger the last episode ended with, with Task Force X pushing through and overwhelming him as he was baited into this trap. Uh, I'm just, I can't wait to get some answers about both Clark's powers, maybe where these these uh, weapons all came from, and who this general finally is. But with that said, though, we're going to go ahead and hop in. If you want to see the full length reaction, check that out over on Patreon or for Gun Marvel channel, get you access as well. It's a watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up with the time codes of a reaction the entire episode. Get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover on the channel. You'll get to suggest and vote on what movies we react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind scenes footage, to try to make it worth your while. So sure to support the channel, but guys, I'd really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this reaction, to leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already, because it really does help us out in the long run here on the channel. With that all said and down the way, let's go ahead and hop into episode nine. Here we go. It's like he disappeared off the face of the earth. Which is why we're here. <laughs> Knows the streets of Metropolis oh my God. better than the clip. It's too dangerous. Go home, okay? I can't. We can't. Superman mm. saved me. Look, I don't know why those people <laughs> want to hurt him. And it's weird and scary now. But when I think of helping Superman, like he helped me, I don't feel so small. So, how are we doing this? Superman's oh. doing his job then. <laughs> Okay, give us a walkie. <laughs> yes! We'll find him and everything will be okay. You'll see. Oh god. Oh no. Yep. Wow, look at this contraption, man. Where am I? Hmm. You're not going to punch your way out of this one, Superman. Now I need dates and numbers. What? What? Dates. I... When is the invasion? How many oh, are wow. Since this time? This time? You... You've met others like me? I was there on Zero Day, and so are you. <sighs> I guess we're finally going to figure out what happened. What the hell? Listen up. 72 hours ago, an unidentified flying object broke through the atmosphere. Sam, where are you? Sam! It's Sam! I'll be home soon. I promise. I can't believe you. Whoa. Uh, hey, Mandy. Dude, it's just like a rival, though. Check out my reaction to that. The giant obelisk appearing. You know, one day, I'm not going to be around to pull you out of trouble. Oh, whoa, what the? Oh, is this the vision he's been getting? Uh... What the? Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Dude, that looks wicked. Whoever or whatever that is. Was that Krypton's explosion, possibly, that hit them from the other side of the gate? I created Task Force X. I took the tech you left behind and turned your weapons into ours. Mm. I need the hard calls and passing yourself off as a hero when we both know what you are. A weapon! Who are you? And why are you on Earth? I, I don't know. I always thought that... Why? Why would they do this? Not the reaction he expected, I think. <laughs> oh, God, it's kidding me. Jimmy, I, I said awful things to Clark. I doubted him when he needed us most. I was wrong, and now he's gone, and... And we are going to find him. You promised me Superman! He took every 
everything from me, and I am not finished with him. Oh yeah. Somebody mentioned this in the comments and I completely didn't even think about it. So that Alex we've been thinking like maybe would be Lex Luthor. It's very likely that it could be Alex Alston, who is the sec one of the second parasites, which would make way more sense actually, but it could be either. We spent so much time guessing about why Nemesis Omega attacked. What if we're wrong? Tap that talk down now. Task Force X doesn't make mistakes. If his people age like us, he's too young to have been part of Zero Day. If he's innocent. Innocent? And what were our friends who were slaughtered guilty of? We the only survivors. And you want to put that on him? Superman is an invader. Are you having doubts because of something real? Or is it because Superman reminds you of her? Think hard mm. about what you say next. We're keeping Superman alive for questioning. It's my call, not yours. Dismissed. <laughs> uh oh. Camera's off. <laughs> See, even without the tech, Livewire can overcharge. Uh oh. Hey, you still want to take down Superman? <laughs> Great. Rematch time, Superman. No more constraints. No more collars. Just you and me and the beatdown of the century. Let's see what the man of steel's got. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you. Oh, hurt me? You don't hurt me. I hurt you. Oh, well, you busted him out. What? Wilson Waller. Wow. Oh, whoa. What do you say now, Cheater? I won't fight you, Ivo. I never wanted to fight anyone. I only wanted to help. Well, then I guess you're just gonna die. Ivo! Stand down! Now! No! He's mine! Oh my god, dude. Oh my I think Slade will lose his eye by the end of the season. Bye -bye. Oh, wow. Yep, there it is. God, <laughs> that happened way faster than I thought it would. Well, this has been fun, but we got places to be. Oh, wow. Livewire can literally just juice him up. Didn't even think about that. He's just a full on kaiju now. It's reminding me of Man of Tomorrow a little bit. Superman! We found him! We found him! Flip, it's not safe. Leave me. Uh. I've got him, everyone. Meet us back at the News Kid Clubhouse. Aww. Clark. Are you okay? Clark? I'm a weapon. I'm an alien invader sent to kill you all. No, you would never hurt anyone. You help people. Why else would I be able to shoot fire from my eyes? To rip apart steel? I'm made for destruction. The Earth's better off without me. No, I won't accept that. You're not a weapon, you're a person. Oh, no. Oh, my Lord. All right, Rod Reese. At least he can stand. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no.
this is all my fault. Oh my god. These weapons here. I'm the only one who can stop him. Clark, you can't beat him in your condition. People are getting hurt, Lois. I, I have to try. What was Waller's plan for these guys going rogue like this? She set them free. <laughs> Fuck you. Long enough. Do whatever you want with me, but leave the people of Matron. Jesus. Jesus, man. Uh oh. Wow, dude, he is, is monstrous the right word? <laughs> My God. No, 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 we have to help. How do we help? I have an idea. Hi, bird watchers. Lend us your energy. Bird, but my real name is Jimmy Olsen. Oh. Superman's best friend. And I'm Lois Lane, Superman's, uh, a reporter for the- Bimbo. Fat Grant. Every single day he went out there and used that power to help us. People have told you to fear Superman because he's different from us. But we humans are capable of causing hurt and pain too. Because of greed. Because we want to punish those who don't look or act like us. Because of fear. But also capable of greatness it's what we choose to do that matters superman's made his choice it's our turn metropolis so please turn off your power shut off your buildings breakers your generators do anything you can to starve parasite of energy yo superman has saved this city over and over again it's time for us to save superman <laughs> we know the more he exerts himself he he juices down you did something. You again. god damn it shut the fuck up dude You've done that yourself. You chose to be a monster, Ivo. And what does that make an alien freak like you? Yo. Don't you read the paper? Oh! <laughs> I'm Superman. God damn! <laughs> he hit him with that dragon fist. Is that gonna is that gonna go away? <laughs> or is this gonna be an eternal situation? I'm okay. I'm okay, Jimmy. Ooh, of course you are. Get used to me being right here, <laughs> I am never letting you go again, buddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I heard everything you said. I meant every word. The world is better with you in it. My world is better with you in it. So don't ever worry me like that again, Smallville. I love you and- No. <laughs> That's fucking adorable. I love you too. Uh oh. What? No! Wait! What? Waller. Hmm. We need to talk, General, about Superman. Yep, there's his eye. You are no longer head of Task Force X. I am. Oh, and mm. General, from now on, 
along, we're taking a different track in regards to Superman. Ivo's last invention, the Omega Cannon. Oh, Should we great. be enough for you to carry out your new mission? Track down and terminate Superman. Wow. Damn. Oh. Ominous little ending here. Good lord. That was a heavy episode, man. Oh, man. But it was thick with the emotions, dude. Just like the moment of realization about Clark and like what brought him here. And we don't know. Again, we don't know for certain that what he believes he saw is what was actually going on. It could have been a hundred things. That invasion of Earth could have been, you know, some rogue faction. That could have been, you know, Zod. That could have been a caped armored Power Ranger Brainiac for all we know. But I was right, at least. I think most of us were right about the tech being Kryptonian. But who was that figure? And who, in the end of the day, are they even alive now is, my, is a good question. They weren't on the planet. And maybe they were evacuating and met what they perceived to be resistance and fought off. I don't know. But even so, whatever is happening there, you know, Jor-El and his mother and all that, like they could have still sent him off planet knowing it was about to detonate. While this was a different operation that was also simultaneously happening. I don't think this is an indication of what Jor-El obviously was his goal was. You know, there's also a an aesthetical difference between his ship and the design of what was coming through there. There's also a color difference in there. So there's some kind of distinction. I don't think that, I think that's just a misdirection. And maybe we'll explore more of that in season two, considering the next episode is the finale for the season. And it seems to be reconciling this Task Force X storyline. And it'll probably end with like a tease for the greater uh, world opening up a little bit. And as we saw... Uh, earlier on with Livewire and some of the other uh, non-meta humans who are typically meta humans, the after effects of using the tech has permanently altered these people. From Parasite to Livewire, they, they've been affected by this. Though uh, Parasite still needs his suit to really kind of do his thing. But Livewire, without any of the tech, was able to become energy exert energy and all of the sort, you know? So I'm wondering if it's going to affect though. She was overloaded. Like she had her uh, harness busted in her first encounter. So I wonder if that had anything to do with it. And if there's the potential for the others to also go that route as well. And she's the reason Slade lost his eye. I mean, we knew that was coming. We knew that was going to be building up to it. And I'm wondering if he's going to adjust his suit to match now, if we re-encounter him in the future. But man, I was just watching uh, Koi and John's reaction to Man of Tomorrow the other day. It's just interesting to me, the two parallels, uh, the par parallel usages of Parasite between that and here. This obviously going the more anime inspired, like Evangelion, giant robo mech kind of centipede creature that he turned into. But like those kaiju elements that are being uh, mirrored in both instances when he absorbs that energy and goes larger and larger and larger and larger and all that. So I, I like that that element of it. But I like that the use of, you know, Lois and uh, Jimmy coming together and, you know, being the voice of reason to Metropolis as a whole, who after the one incident and, you know, uh, Vicky's expose, you know, started to question Clark and if he is truly a menace or not. So like them coming out and really kind of like, look at what he's done. Like, you know, he's put himself on the line for us every day and it's, it's, it's our turn. Like that whole speech was, it was, it got me, man. It was really, really getting me. And I was like, I definitely had like moist eyes for like the last half of this episode, like the entire way through. From that and them, everybody shutting down their power to you know, cut off Parasite from getting any larger and continuing to wreak havoc because this is no longer a Superman problem. This is just, he's he's running amok. And I like how he's got this kind of inferiority complex to the extent that he still sees himself as the hero in this moment, despite him being this gigantic 
raging monster who just lost over and over again. And just kind of coming back as well to the Lex of it all. There's still a lot of Lex Luthery things, especially like that coming back and then they send them home and like fearing things that people, things that don't look like us or act like us or anything like that. And it, it focused in on Alex because those are things that like Lex Luthor always tends to echo. But we were introduced to him alongside Ivo. And once that was kind of opened up to me and I completely for, I always forget about Alex and Alexandra Alston, the the twin parasites. And I was just like thinking about that. And they, they he easily if Ivo is taken down, he could become a parasite of him uh, himself. You know, we just don't see Alexandra or anything like that. Ali Alston, if you watch Superman and Lois. I'm just so curious about that character because we keep coming back to him. But he speaks such very strong Luther uh, rhetoric. And we haven't seen anything like LexCorp or anything being established yet. So maybe we could see in the decline of Amazotech, maybe it could be turned around and recouped and maybe he'll be build his own. And maybe this is what we'll see the uh, the origin of LexCorp in this universe. Who knows? I'm curious. I'm very curious about what who that character will end up being, if, if anybody at all. I mean, obviously, they're going to end up being somebody. We're going to be they they went back to that character and we've seen him more than once. We're coming back to him one way or the other, whether he's Lex or Alston. We'll have to wait and find out. Uh, I'm wondering about the rest of Task Force X. You know, now that they escaped, are they just gone? I would assume so. Uh, this outside of the callers, like the shot callers, I don't think uh, they didn't have really any other contingencies to keep them under control. And really, none of them wanted to be there to begin with. So does, is Amanda going to have to start from scratch or are we going to see them just kind of going to the wind or do you think she'll call them back in? Obviously, she still got slayed, but it might just be set up for later. But then this Omega weapon that uh, Ivo had built to take out Superman is now being forced upon Sam to be the one to pull the trigger himself. But like we saw her hit that button on the computer when Sam had his back turned and he's watching the monitors. And then that's when all the stuff, the cameras went down and everything that, yeah. So like she caused this whole thing because she didn't like how he was handling stuff. It was a risky maneuver, but also very Amanda Waller, though also unlike Amanda Waller in some instances, and though this is a proto Amanda Waller, maybe a reckless move, but one that benefits her in the long run. But if the city didn't turn against Parasite, what was the plan to stop Ivo? It's just one of those situations. Um, but coming back to Sam, we finally figured out what happened. You know, he was like a happy-go-lucky guy who didn't, you know, he was kind of loosey-goosey with the rules and all this stuff. And then they were just kind of like, oh, what's this giant thing? All arrival style. Denis Villeneuve, I've uh, been here kind of like uh, filming this thing. And obviously you can see the con like the, the contrast between his outlook and Waller's, especially given that situation. And then what happened there, obviously it must have coincided with something to do with his wife, Lois's mother. It just could have been the day, maybe she died in childbirth, depending on how the ages line up. You know, I don't know. But I like how he had the realization when he was in the moment when he was looking at his Superman and like saw the doubt, the pain and the, the heartbreak on his face and the tears. That he's like, okay, maybe what I'm doing is not what I think I've been doing. You know, it, it, and then he started to think about it a little bit more. It's like, if they age anything remotely like us, he would have been a baby at that point. That couldn't have been him. And he starts to rationalize this when he's pushing past just his pure fear and that drive for vengeance or whatever he associates with that day. You know, so it, it could line up perfectly with that if that is the case. And maybe he just kind of, the losses, the people that he, in his, you know, is, uh, crew his squad that died in that that day as well and maybe that coincided again like with the missing of maybe lois's birth maybe the death of his mother her mother in some fashion i don't know and he just kind of connects all that pain into one thing and has painted this target on this entity that didn't have a face at the time and then he just thought once this superman showed up that he could be one in the same but then once confronted with him face to face Maybe that's not the case. I don't know. I like all of these elements in this episode. It was just a very uplifting episode at the same time, very heartbreaking all in one. What's this tease going to lead in here, though? Maybe it's just like opening up the possibility that like now the Jimmy now Lois has got over that hump. You know, she, I don't think she's like 
Uh, I don't think she doubts Clark anymore, at least our Clark. But now Jimmy's got this orb, and he's seen what Lois has seen. And what's his reaction to this going to be is my question. I don't know. Why is that our stinger at the end? I, I was hoping we were past that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that Superman we saw, maybe it wasn't from Krypton. Maybe, I mean, maybe it was from a Krypton, but what if that was a Superman from another universe that was invading and their Krypton exploded and simultaneously on the day that Clark's ship crashed? I don't know. There's something about that that's going to link into this evil Superman thing. And I don't know if that means, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's a couple of options, but I'm not I'm just not sure what they're going to go with. But this was another great episode, and I can't wait to see what they do to bring this whole thing to a close. Obviously, we've got a second season already greenlit, and I'm excited to see what they do with that. But guys, what do you think of the episode? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below here in the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. And if you want to see the full length reaction, Remember, you can check it out over on Patreon or Forgotten Marvel's channel gets you access as well. And speaking of before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Sherritt, Ryan Karen, Yori Coruscant, Margaret Grace, Melito, Robert Angiano, Jeffrey Hale, M. Sephiroth, Jake Contrell, and Eric Official. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Well, that's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.